Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how you can use the speed change tab inside of the inspector in order to double the speed of your video clips, reverse them, or to do a freeze frame. So doing all of those was possible before in DaVinci Resolve, but the new workflow I find to be a little bit more streamlined. So if you click on a video clip and you have the inspector open in the edit tab, you can come down on video to where you can find speed change between composite and stabilization. So to expand it and see all of the settings, you click on the name of it, and then you can see several controls that you can use in order to edit your clip. So the first option here is the direction. So by default, this is going forward as in your video plays back in the timeline chronologically from the start of the recording to the end. So for instance, if I play it back in the timeline right now, it's totally normal. We haven't changed anything to it. The next option, which is the same arrows going backwards, is reverse. So all you would need to do to reverse your video clip is to click here. And now if we go ahead and hit play, we can see that the video clip is moving backwards. Because it needs to process that effect, it may look a little choppy in the timeline, but once you actually export your video, it should be fine. That's all gonna, of course, depend on the power of your current computer. Okay, so the third option here looks like a little snowflake. It's going to create a freeze frame. So it's important to note that when you create the freeze frame, it's from wherever the timeline cursor is currently positioned. So if I was to click the freeze frame icon here, what would happen is that the video clip would be split into two clips and everything forward in the timeline for that clip is going to have the freeze frame. It won't play the animation anymore and everything before the timeline cursor is still going to be as it was before. So in this case, it's still going to be reverse. If I hit the freeze frame icon here, you see it splits into two clips. The freeze frame is going to be at the moment where the timeline cursor was positioned. So if I go ahead and hit play here, we can see it's not moving at all. It's stuck in time. But if I go back a couple seconds and hit play, we should be able to see that the video is still playing in reverse, just like it was before we hit the freeze frame icon. But as soon as it gets to that cut, our video is frozen. So if you wanted your video clip to play back normally until it reached a key moment and then freeze it, having this workflow is going to make it very easy to achieve that. Okay, so let's hit Control Z a few times, get back to our normal clip playing forward direction. There's a few more settings here that we can play around with. So the speed percent and the frames per second are locked together with each other. So this video would be playing at 30 frames per second normally, which is 100% of the base video speed. So if I change the video speed to 200%, the frames per second is going to update alongside that. So doubling the speed up here doubles the frames per second. I can go ahead type in 200% here, have that update. Uh, what you'll notice is that in this case, the clip shrinks because the entire clip was already brought into the timeline. Since we doubled the speed, it's going to half the duration. But we can go back to the start of the timeline now, hit play, and we should be able to see our clip playing much faster. So of course, what we're going to run into here, if our video was only recorded with 30 frames per second, is that it's going to start to look choppy because there's just not enough frames to fill in the gap. So if we go to the start of our video clip here and hit play, we should be able to see it move at double speed. So of course, just as easily, we could boost the speed or the frames per second, double on top of that, making it play in quadruple speed. So I'll make the frames 120 FPS, and that automatically makes the speed 400%. So now we can go back to the start, hit play, and it should be playing very, very fast. So there's two last checkboxes down here. Pitch correction is going to make it so that when you increase or decrease the speed of your clips, if there is someone talking, it's going to try to correct the voice to make it sound more normal. Without the pitch correction, if you doubled or tripled the speed of the video, someone talking might sound very chipmunky. So it works a little bit to reduce that and making them sound more normal just in a fast forwarded voice. And of course, the opposite would be true. If you slow your video down, it would get a deeper voice. So pitch correcting, making it a little less deep, getting it back to the normal voice. So um, and then the last setting here is ripple sequence. So if you've ever done a ripple delete, so if you've ever done a ripple delete, uh, which I can demonstrate just by copying this clip a few times, and I right click this middle clip and I go up to ripple delete, it's going to remove it and everything to the right is going to get pushed over to the left. So if you have ripple sequence checked and you are modifying the duration of your video clip by increasing or decreasing the speed, then it is going to push the adjacent clip forward or backwards as it needs to, uh, making sure that any of the black space is completely filled and basically making it so that you don't need to manually move the clips. So if I take this first clip here and I increase the speed, it's going to shorten the duration of the clip. So this right clip is going to get pushed over to the left 
and they're still bordering each other. There's no black space and that's usually what you want. Likewise, if I decrease the speed of the clip, it's going to increase it past its original duration and it's going to push any clips ahead of it forward to the right. Once again, making sure that there's no black space. But if we uncheck ripple sequence and now I increase the speed, it's going to leave a black gap. But without ripple sequence, if we decrease the speed, it is actually going to keep the same clip length. So the extra footage that isn't showing in this clip duration by decreasing the speed to something like half is going to be still in the background. So it still exists in the original media pool. But if we want to bring it out, we can hit T to enter trim mode and push this clip forward up to the duration that we actually have video information for. Now, if we want to adjust the duration of the clip without pushing clips in front of it forward, then we can do the same thing in selection mode. So if we do selection mode and we move the border of this clip, uh, we can still snap it to the edge of the right one, or we can push it further and overwrite the right side clip. Uh, but hopefully you can see that if you have ripple sequence checked, it saves you the hassle of needing to do those steps. So it's usually a good thing to have on just to make things a little bit easier. So lastly, for those who don't know, I'll also show you where to find the old speed changing settings. So you right click any clip you want to change the speed on. You go down on the menu to where it says change clip speed right below change clip duration and above retime controls. And here you will see mostly the same stuff being able to increase decrease the speed, which reflects in frames per second, you can ripple sequence, you can reverse the speed. So that is like the backwards direction arrow here. And freeze frame also when you check it in the new version, it will split the clips down wherever the timeline cursor is set. So whatever's before is going to still be animated and whatever after and whatever is after it gets frozen on that first frame that the timeline cursor is at. As far as I remember in version 16 and below it didn't do that. So I think I prefer the new version. So that is a nice change. Uh, anyway, pretty much the same settings there. It's just a little bit easier to do in the inspector now. One final final thing over on the cut page, there are also access to speed controls. So if you click on a clip, you can go to tools. And then in the middle here, there's a section for speed. So you can drag this section speed to the right and left to increase the playback speed of a clip. All the other controls you can't really find there. But as of DaVinci Resolve 17, you have access to the inspector in the top right hand corner. And you can also find the speed change settings here exactly like you found them on the edit page. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning about how to do speed changes and freeze frames in the new DaVinci Resolve 17. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my future video content.